This message was coming. Um, excited about it would be an understatement. So I hope that it come across in a way um, that's going to make sense. And I called Lindy um, early in the week, and I said, Lindy, I'd, I'd like you at the end of the service to come up with the praise team and to sing um, "Worthy of It All." She did. She said, Dad, that's already on the list for Sunday. So what a confirmation that is. And here's, here's something that we need to understand as Christians and, and even people that aren't saved and people of the world, that God is worthy of, of our praise. Jesus is worthy of our praise in spite of where we're at, in spite of what we're doing, what circumstance we're going through, saved or unsaved. Everything that He's accomplished, He's worthy of everything. So we're going to go through a few things. And, and you know me, I'm kind of a nerd when it comes to facts about the universe because I'm a star guy, a planet guy, and the Hubble spacecraft is one of the best inventions ever. And any have anybody that will kindred spirit <laughs> Okay, we have a couple nerds in here. Um I'm okay with that. All right. Worthy. First of all, let's read what worthy is. Tommy, thank you once again for the glasses. I left mine on my desk at the house. Worthy to render or treat as worthy to exalt or to revere, to honor or esteem, to respect, value, and reward, to adore with deserving worship. Isn't that good? Isn't that a, we could we could go home right now? Okay, he's worthy of this. To render, to treat as worthy, to exalt, to revere, to honor, to esteem, to respect, to value, to reward, to adore with deserving worship. And worship has nothing to do with us, really. It's what He's deserving of. All we have to do is say, yes, Father, I recognize who You are, and I worship You with every fiber of my being. Worship isn't about selfish or unselfish. It's not about, well, I, I, it's really not my character to lift my arms. It's not, it's not, it, it, it has nothing to do with that. It's, it has everything to do with who is he? Who is he? He's the creation. He's the creator. He's everything. Okay, so I want to go through the nerd facts. And you can write these down or you can just say, well, Pastor went through some nerd facts again. So anyway. I think they're great. Uh, if the earth was the universe, okay, the, the ball earth, you could fit the entire human race in a sugar cube. Does that make sense? And the rest of the earth is the universe. Think about billions and billions of people the size of a sugar cube on this earth, and that's how big the universe is. Is that not mind-boggling? It's nerd stuff, I told you that. A conservative estimate, there may be as many as three sextillion stars in the universe. You know how much is a sextillion? That's 23 zeros. What we see of the stars and the planets, even on, I've been to big sky country, I've been to Montana, I've been there when it was crystal clear on the top of a 12,500 foot mountain. And it, was, it truly is big sky country. Unbelievable the amount of what you can see in, in the stars and the galaxy and the universe. That's only about 5%. What we see on a good day, 5% of what is actually there, and that's conservative. They don't really know. They're just guesstimating. There are more stars in the universe than in all the beaches of the earth combined. All of the sand, the pebbles. You pick up a handful of sand and... And there might be 10,000 pieces of sand in a handful. All the beaches on the face of the earth combined doesn't compare with the number of stars that are in the universe. The earth could fit into our sun, in our solar system, 1.3 million times. Big bang, right?
God can speak big bangs, but God creates things with his word, with the mouth he proclaims. I find it hard to believe that something blew up one day, and, and here we are today. You've heard me say these before, and I get the facts messed up, and it's a good thing that I wrote them down again. These are the last two, and we're going to move on. The earth is right now, sitting here, the earth is spinning at 1,037 miles an hour. And here we sit. Do you feel that? Because of the Creator. Last one, the earth is orbiting the sun while we're spinning at 1,037 miles an hour. The earth is orbiting the sun at 66,627 miles an hour. So here we spin and orbit, and we don't feel it. So who's responsible for that? Who's the architect? Where does that majesty belong? You are worthy of it all. Let's walk through. I'm going to give you three scriptures on three different categories of where we're headed today. The first three apply with everything that we see in the sky. I'm going to read from John, the first chapter, verse 3. This is in the Amplified. Listen closely. All things. What's it say? Okay, nobody else is responsible. He's the Creator. All things were made and came into existence through Him. And without Him, not even one thing was made that has come into being. So everything that you see on this earth, one of my favorites is the duckbill platypus. Why? Why an egg-laying, uh, beaver-looking conglomeration of, of, of who knows what uh, was in God's imagination to, to make a duckbill platypus. But he did. So you guys could hear it this morning. Let's read 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 6. These three verses, they deal with the Creator, worthy of it all. If there was nothing else that God ever did was just create everything that we see, everything that's in the stars, the galaxies, the universe, if that's all that ever happened, He is worthy of our praise just because of that. Okay, verse 6. Yet for us there is but one God, the Father, who is the source of all things. And we exist for Him, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, by whom all things that have been created, and we believers exist, and have life, and have been redeemed through Him. All things. He's responsible for that creation. And then, we have been redeemed, we have been set free, and made debt free. How awful would it be for us to, well, yes, I'd, I'd love to, to become a Christian. I, 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 I've done so many things wrong, and, and I'm, I'm just plagued with, with guilt. Well, you're going to have to find somebody to pay your debt because Jesus wants everybody that's perfect, right? Aren't you glad he paid the price? How many of us have skeletons in our closet we don't want anybody to know about? We have a few, and the rest of you are absolutely perfect. How many of us have skeletons in our closet that Jesus has forgiven that's nobody else's business? <laughs> that's better, isn't it? It's gone. For anybody to bring it up, it would actually be a lie because it doesn't exist anymore. It's gone. If that was the only thing, he create, all of creation, if He just redeemed us and took our sins away, that would be enough for us to say, Father, You are worthy of all. Our praise, our adoration, our love, our gratitude. Father, you're worthy. But it's not all. Let's read 1 Colossians chapter 1, verses 16 and 17. Verse 16, For through him God created everything, through Jesus. 
in the heavenly realms and on earth. He made the things we can see and the things we cannot see. Now, this is what we're going to read here right now, such as follows, thrones, kingdoms, those are all of the, the bad things, the principalities, the powers, the thrones, the strongholds, the, the dominions. Such as thrones, kingdoms, rulers, authorities in the unseen world, demonic, everything was created through Him and for Him. Verse 17, He existed before anything else. And He holds all of creation together. Now why did God create the, the, the thrones and the principalities and the powers and the strongs? And, the, and Why did He create that? He's just God. He knew that there had to be a price that was paid. He knew that there had to be something inside of us, that it wasn't a clear path. It had to be a chosen path by us to salvation. We're not going to be picked and you're saved. It's going to be Father be Lord of my life and forgive me of my sins. Before that, we battle principalities and powers and strongholds and dominions. But Jesus said, all power in heaven and on earth have been given to me. And now the kingdom of heaven is in you. To battle principalities and powers and strongholds. How many of you are tired of family members how, or jobs or finances and health? How many of you are tired of those strongholds in your life? Whether it's with you or a family member, your finances, your health. There were some family members that we got a, 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 a great big diagnosis that we weren't expecting, especially at their age. They're not saved, but I truly believe that they will be because that's the first thing that I'm going to address. Look, you're young. God is worthy of everything. There's heaven, there's hell. It's time to make a choice. So I want you just to believe with me and agree with me that that's going to happen. The doors will open. The heart's going to be receptive because I want to live forever with this person in heaven. Okay? Okay. Okay. <laughs> We won't get into what Jesus did with the strongs or the thrones and the kingdom's rulers. That, that's a whole other sermon. But I, I will tell you this, that he, 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 he shut their mouth. He shut their mouth. And when Jesus went to receive or to, to, to gather up the, the keys of death, hell, and the grave from Satan, who had those? In Hebrews it says that keys of death were, were the enemy. They were the devil's. They were. Jesus said, no more. And you've heard me say it before that those of you that are newcomers, it's not scriptural, but you could tie a lot of scriptures together, that when Jesus went to hell and took the keys from the devil, that there was no fight, there was no quarrel, there was absolute silence because of who he was. They understood also that he is worthy of praise. It just doesn't apply to Christians. It just doesn't apply to, to humanity that all creation, in spite of what it is, cries out the majesty and the glory of our Savior. And they long for the day that there will be no more corrosion. Think about that. The trees, the rocks, the mountains. Another day, another story. What we just read in those three scriptures would be enough to cry out worthy of it all. To exalt, to revere Him, to honor and esteem Him, to respect and reward Him. Not just for the things that are going our way. How many of us fall into that trap? Everything's going good. All of my bills are being paid. My health is great. I just had a fantastic uh, visit with the doctor. Uh, uh, the money, the finances are good. Uh, I don't have any really any kid squirrel or kid squirrels. <laughs> kid quarrels. Man, say that five times. Everything seems to be going good. So, Father, you're worthy of our praise. Thank you, God. And then everything crashes before you. Is he still worthy of our praise? Yes. To look into the sky, it doesn't make any difference what's going on in your life. To understand the majesty and the glory and the rule 
of the King of Kings who spoke all of that with a word into existence. Why? Because of us. There wasn't anything created that wasn't for us. God's a creator. He chose earth in the midst of all of those three verses, and there's many more, all of those verses, and it talks about the vastness of the universe. He created for us. Stop and think about the millions and millions and millions of miles of universe, and He chose one planet, Earth, to come and to die for our sins, that we were made in the image of our Father. The tragedy it is for anyone on the face of this earth, being a chosen race, that anybody should die and go to hell. It is. He's not just a creator. That's number one. He's worthy. But aren't you glad that He took away our sin? John chapter 1, verse 29 reads, The next day John saw Jesus coming toward Him and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Aren't you glad that He took our sins? It's the easiest decision in the history of decisions, but it's the hardest to make in the history of choices. Jesus, forgive me. From this day forward, I will serve you with everything that I am. So He gave us salvation. Aren't you glad? I don't know if there's anyone in this house today that's not saved, but I'm here to tell you that it's this easy. Father, forgive me. Jesus gets past the intellect. The intellect will say, I don't need that because I'm healthy. Nothing's going on. And I'm here to tell you that my, my father-in-law, his, his dementia is, is going downhill swiftly. And, and it, it's getting to a point that he can't hardly walk. But I was given the opportunity. He's 89 years old about four months ago before any of the, of the crash of his physical body was happening. And there's a divine appointment that the Holy Spirit set up because God's desire is that all men be saved. To the last breath, He is worthy of it all. So if you're in this house today and you need Jesus as Lord and Savior, we're going to go through that here in a little bit. Jesus, I just I love You. There's something about You, Father, that's it. I, I need You. I don't even know what it is that I need, but I, I, I need you. Forgive me of my sin. Let's read 1 Peter, the second chapter, verse 24. He personally carried our sins in his body on the cross so that we can be dead to sin and live for what is right. By His wounds, you are healed. Jesus took on the sins of the world at the cross. God turned His back when He was on the cross because He couldn't look at sin. And aren't you glad that someone, the King of Kings, the, the Son of God, came and made a way for us to go to heaven? Don't ever take for granted salvation. Don't ever take for granted creation because they deserve God's praise. Creation and the vastness, all of that for us. And He's worthy. Salvation, making a way for us to not go to hell, but to go to heaven. He's worthy of our praise. And I hope I'm speaking to our humanity because it is mine. How many of us get so caught up in every day? Some of you are in difficult situations. Laura and I, every other, every other night, we are spending out at my in-laws because they're 89 and 83. And they can't do it by themselves. And so has life taken a turn? 
Absolutely. But you do what you have to do. God gave his family as a gift. You do what you have to do. But he's still, in spite of life, he's worthy of it all. In spite of what you're going through, he's, he's still worthy of it all. What you're going through doesn't, doesn't take away from the price that he paid as, as creator, as, as savior of the world. It doesn't take away from the fact that he deserves our praise in spite of where we're at. That we don't just praise Him on the mountains, that we praise Him in the valleys, that we give Him the glory that is due His name. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain. Father, in spite of my turmoil and what I'm going through, I still recognize You as King of all kings and Lord of lords. And I worship You. Revelation chapter 5, verse 9. And they were all singing, the elders around the throne. This is a new song of praise to the Lamb. Because you were slaughtered for us, you are worthy to take the scroll and open its seals. Your blood was the price paid to redeem us. You purchased us to bring us to God out of every tribe, language, people, group, and nations. It makes no difference who you are. He paid the price for your sin. The enemy would love to say, you know what, you've, you've done so much bad stuff, you don't deserve to go to heaven. The devil lies. He's, he's the father of lies. There's not anybody in here, there's not anybody on the face of the earth that has done enough to warrant Jesus saying you're not worthy because He paid the price for every tribe, every nation, every language. He paid the price for everyone. It's our responsibility to share the majesty and the glory and the worthiness of our Savior to this world. That they see in spite of of the, the, the turmoil that we go through in this humanity, the Bible never promised that it was going to be peaches and butterflies and bluebirds. I, I haven't read that translation. There's going to be trouble. But in the midst of the trouble, I've, I know the one who calms the waves. I know the one that speaks peace where there is no peace. I'm the, I know the one who moves the mountain in our path and, and sets it into the sea. I know the one who, who fills up the valley before us that we walk on a plain that we never thought possible. I know Him and you know Him as Jesus. And He's worthy. He's worthy of our praise. Why did he pay such a huge price? Why did he, why did he pay such a, a huge price so that we could go to heaven through him? He's the creator. That's enough right there to, to deserve honor and praise and He's our Savior. Once again, that, that's, that's more than enough that we should give Him honor and glory and praise and honor. He made a way for us. But what, what's in the equation that He would pay such a price? Let's find out. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. And it begins to tell us, my old self has been crucified with Christ. That guy's gone. And no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who what? Who loved me and gave Himself just for me. So why did He pay such a huge price just for you and for me? Because He loves us. I 
I don't, I don't get it. I don't understand it. But I don't have to. I don't have to. He's worthy because He's Creator. He's worthy because He's Savior. Why, why God? He's worthy because He loved us. And it's a love that we will never, ever understand. But we get to experience it every day, all day. You are worthy. Romans chapter 8, verses 38-39. I'm convinced that nothing can separate us from God's love. Isn't that amazing? Neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, now listen to this, neither our fears for today, any of you afraid of anything today? Yes. Nothing can separate us from God's love. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor demons. Neither our fears for today, nor our worries about tomorrow. Any of you worry about tomorrow? Any of us? Not even the powers of hell. What? Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all of creation, all that we see the universe, will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Why did He pay such a price? Because He loves us more than we could ever, ever, ever imagine. We will never figure it out. We don't have to. God loves us. Jesus paid a huge price. Undeserving? Absolutely. Tainted? Yeah. Rough edges? Yeah. He doesn't care. Have any of you ever made a mistake? I I have. quiet crowd, but I I know for the most part that 99.9999999 of us have made a mistake. (laughs) Wow. We're going to stop the service right now. Dave, I'm sorry. (laughs) There's not anything that we could ever do or have done or even think about doing that would separate us from God's love. He's creator. He's worthy of everything. Our praise, esteem, honor, respect. Savior, He gave His life on the cross for us. But not just that, to pay the price for us to get to heaven. Why did He do it? Because He loves us. I want everybody in this house to experience that today. How many of you know the devil's a liar? How many of you know the devil's a liar? Okay. Jonas, can you round up the praise team, bub?
How about now? I'm not muted now. Did any of you miss anything from what I said? I don't think so. And I, I, when I worked at Newell, I would cut uh, deer racks in, into just like sections, like, like quarters or half dollars, and polish them, and look, they look like glass. And I had a, a guy that worked back in the CNC router to inscribe on there, John 3.16. And it was just a door opener, you know, talking with somebody, hey, I've got a rack fetish, and, but look at this, that's cool, Are you on it? And just open a conversation. So I asked Paul, I said, hey, I've got these neat little deals I want to send you, because he is absolutely a rack fetish. He, he collects hundreds and hundreds, hundreds every year. And so he gets it, and he calls me and he says, this is, this is four or five years ago. He said, what's... what's John 3, 1, 6. And I said, well, it's, it's actually John 3, 16. And he said, well, what is that? I said, that's a book in the Bible. He had never opened a Bible to that day. So I talked it over with Laura, and, and I called him back, and I said, would you be offended if, if I... If I sent you a Bible that you, you could just be acquainted with, because you, man, you know me. You know my heart. You know who I am. And I love you unconditionally, just like you are. But, but here's the deal, Paul. I want you to spend eternity with me in heaven. Yeah, sure. Go ahead and send me the Bible. That's fine. The whole t- He was even thinking right then when he gets it, he's going to put it in a drawer and never open it. He said, I'll just appease him and we'll go from there. So we went, and Laura, Laura and I ordered a Bible, and, and we sent it to him. And he, he said, I don't have any idea why I laid it on my kitchen table. I had no idea. But he said, I came home, and I was tired one night, and I was eating supper. And he's a landscaper during the summer, and he lays rocks, and, and he, he's, he just works. And he said, something told me after the meal to just pull that Bible over and just open it up. And he started reading in the Gospels. He began to see the teachings of Jesus and what he did. You don't think that was Holy Spirit bread? You don't think that the Holy Spirit was the author of everything that went on? And so he calls me and he said, Hey, I don't know what to do. He said, the girl that I'm living with now, he said, I called her in the other day and he said, hey, babe, he said, what we're doing, we don't need a preacher. The Holy Spirit will tell you through His Word. He said, what we're doing, this this book tells me that it's wrong. And we're going to have to do something about it. She said, I'm not doing anything about it. And she packed up and left. He said, what do I do? I said, how about what you're reading in that Bible become reality to you? And he gave his life to Christ. This last scripture, it puts everything in a nutshell. Jesus was the creator. He was co-author of everything. He's, He's our Savior. He died for us on the cross. But more than anything, why He did all of that and what the devil would like to lie to us about is who we are in our identity. I'm here to tell you that God so loved the world. It doesn't say Christians. God so loved all of mankind. Let's read it. John 3, 16 and 17. For God so loved the world. So, He so loved us. There ought to be about 20 million O's or on, the, on that so. He so, so, so loved us. How do we know that? Because He gave up the darling of heaven to pay the price just for us. That's why He's worthy. Just for a sinner such as I. Just for somebody that makes mistakes every step of every day. And he doesn't care. Why? Because he loves us. He steers us. He guides us. He imparts to us. He anoints us. And he forgives us. He 
gave His only begotten Son that whoever, it doesn't make any difference who you are, believes in Him, should not perish, should not go to hell, should not have a life that doesn't mean anything, but have everlasting life. That means when you die, you get to live with Him forever and ever and ever and ever. And why? Verse 17, For God didn't send His Son into the world to condemn Him. He didn't come in as judge and jury on the downside and say, you've made a mistake, so you're going straight to hell. He didn't come to condemn the world. But that the world through Him might be saved. He is worthy! He is worthy of our praise! He's worthy! He is worthy! Stand to your feet! 